I don't just like this man. I love him, and I don't care who knows it. Um, and uh, I'm in on that. Uh, uh, we all. We, yeah. There's much love. I'll stop talking about him like he's not sitting here. <laughs> the great Colin Hanks here on the Rich Eisen Show. Good to see you, brother. Good to see you, brother. Love you back, by uh, the way. I, right, uh, it's a mutual. It's mutual. Uh, you've been telling me about this show um, when we've just been hanging out for quite some time. I'm psyched that it is finally here. Yes. It's called The Offer. The first three episodes of this new limited series, 10 episodes long, uh, will start streaming next week exclusively on Paramount+. Plus. You you play like a uh, a collection of, of yeah, executives, he, right? So Barry Lapidus is a composite character of uh, all the people that thought making The Godfather was a horrible idea. <laughs> so as hard it is as it is to believe that there's yeah. like one guy on this show that thinks it's a bad idea and, and went to great lengths to like not make the movie, turns yes. out there were many many more people, <laughs> but they just threw it all into one guy and said, "Well, let's give it to." Let's give it to that guy. Right. And so you channeled all of your um, uh, experiences maybe being in a room with people who tell you no. I mean, if you haven't come across someone who tells you no, then you're not doing the job that you (laughs) think you're doing. (laughs) I could play that role very well. Yeah, no, absolutely. I could play that role You know, the thing that was described to me, uh, uh, my friend uh, Dexter Fletcher, who I did Band of Brothers with, he's a former actor, he's a director Mm -hmm. now, he Mm -hmm. did Rocket Man, the Elton John thing. Uh, he, he, he directed our, our first two episodes and he called me up. He says, I want you to do this because I really want to see you play a bad guy who says no, but with a smile. And I just went, that's an offer I can't refuse. Nicely done. Done. Ah. done. Colin okay. Hanks, talking about the offer on Paramount Plus, our terrestrial radio audience just returned. So, um, so okay, this is a behind the scenes look of the way The Godfather got made correct, correct. Okay. yes it is not a remake of the godfather by any by any stretch but it's, a, it's just about the making it's of- about the making of it and and what's what's uh, kind of interesting about it you know whether you're a fan of the godfather or not if you're a fan of movies uh it really shows just how many miracles it takes to make a movie it's a miracle if you got a good idea. It's a miracle if you can write it. It's a miracle if anyone reads it, and it's mm. a miracle if anyone thinks it's any good. Then right. it's a miracle if anyone gives you any money to make it. Then it's a miracle if you get the cast you want, and it's a miracle it doesn't rain on day 35, that one exterior that <laughs> means so much to you. It's the essence of the film. And then it's a miracle if it cuts together uh, any well. It's a miracle if you can get those songs you really want that tells the audience how to feel. And then it's a miracle you know, if uh, anyone goes and sees it and thinks that it's good, and then tells their friends. So any artistic endeavor is comprised of millions of miracles. And the show, the series, the offer, goes into detail as to just how many miracles it took to get The Godfather made. Because everybody looks at it now and says, was the greatest film of all time with the most incredible performances by the most talented actors of, of a generation and all that stuff, which is true. But... They still had to go through just as many hurdles and, and hoops in order to uh, to bring that vision to the screen. And so the show is sort of what they had to go through. I mean, what you just said is is it perfectly captures so much, except when you said whether you like The Godfather or not. If somebody doesn't like The Godfather, that's fighting words. Oh, absolutely. Oh, I mean, no, like, I agree. It's like we got to throw down if but that's the I, case. I can't alienate half of the, the listening audience, <laughs> the viewing audience. Well, for, for those who might be listening and viewing right now um, this this conversation, Colin Hanks, um, so many people are, you know, in my listening and viewing audience watching Winning Time right now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Is this similar to that where, where we're going to see – um, yeah. stories from the past where... Yeah, you know. I think so. I mean, I, I've only watched a few episodes of, of Winning Time, which I found to be a, a, a very enjoyable and, yes. and, and, and very funny. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, obviously ours is not nearly as as, as comedic um, in, in its approach. Okay. But it's definitely um, sort of pulling, uh, p- pulling the curtain back and sort of showing you... Hey, you know, when you see certain things, or it's so like with athletes, for example, like, yes, sir. like like with winning time, you see them hit the game singing shot. You go, oh god, that must be so easy. That must be so great. Right. But you don't see any of the struggle, and that's what I think both of those, you know, these shows are both winning time and, and the offer, where it shows just how much hard work it goes into it, how much luck goes into it, and it just so happens that it features a bunch of names and and, and that you recognize. And hopefully the actors that they pick to play those names resemble them just enough. 
uh, and sound like them just enough. And then, you know, hopefully, hopefully you, you get all the miracles. Amen. Uh, but you knew that anyway. Yeah. I mean, like the, uh, this is, you know, anything that you're in, I'll see and watch. And then everybody else in this cast, I mean, Miles Teller, who plays Albert S. Ruddy, yeah. who was the producer, right? I mean, so I guess yeah. a lot of people are thinking, who's playing Brando, right? Who's yeah, playing yeah. Pacino? This is about the making of the film, yeah. mostly, correct? It's like, mostly, but yeah, it's all based on 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 Al Ruddy's experience, who who has said that every day making The Godfather was the worst day of his life. <laughs> 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 Which gives you an idea of the, 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 the stuff he's got to go through on the show. But yeah, Miles, Miles plays uh, Al Ruddy, Matthew Good plays Robert Evans, who's in that clip, who is just an Phenomenal. utter, an utter delight, an utter delight. I had so much fun uh, playing with him. And Juno Temple is in it, and Bern Gorman, and and I mean, just a, a list of of names that goes on and on. Everyone's really. It was such a fun group of people. Terrific, yeah. just great. And so, um, I guess then one last question on, on the cast: uh, Who plays Abe Vigoda? In this. <laughs> Anybody plays? <laughs> There's no Tessio? I mean, did you I, read for Tessio first? You can tell me. I, I read oh, for Tessio I first. I you read, did you read for Vagoda first? I've never asked you that question I, before. <laughs> <laughs> You've never asked anybody that question. <laughs> That's true. Same height. I mean, it would work. Question. I don't know. A uh, Tessio prequel? A Tessio prequel? Uh, now, now we're talking. Now we're yeah. talking. Little, yeah, little, that would little be Clemenza good. prequel. I'll be honest. I okay. don't think. I don't think there is anyone that was cast as Tessio. Because I mean, how could to, you do that? You I hate can't. to denigrate the show before it starts, but it's a missed opportunity. You can't. You can't. It is, no, it is a missed opportunity for sure. For sure. You know. Uh, that's for. I love you for asking that question. That's so brilliant. That's great. You know, I just, it's literally been asked a million questions the past few days. Right. Ain't no one asked that one. <laughs> honestly, man, without the Godfather. Maybe there would have been no Barney Miller. And, you know, I mean, that's who knew the gateway to Barney Miller would have been the Godfather. I mean, sax you know, solos saying, for uh, all of that stuff. credits would have uh, would have never gotten to where they did without. Barney oh, Miller. my gosh. Colin Hanks here on the Rich Eisen show. All right. Um, are you you've heard the Debo news, I imagine. No, right about what's the that? That he's he wants out. Oh, yay. Oh, yay. You've heard that news. I, I literally thought that it was like something that just happened no. in the you no, know, no, no, no. hour. It hasn't advanced, in the, even though the NFL has advanced at a, an insane rate. I don't know. Every time I turn on the TV, it says breaking news, <laughs> even if it's been five hours. Right. Okay, so <laughs> nothing's true. really changed. He still wants out. Well, he wants out. The, the, the question is, is why does he want out? And, and there's one issue that he potentially has that's not fixable mm -hmm. that he doesn't want to play in california that oh. he's from south carolina oh right okay and so, so it's not it's not jimmy g related no it's not jimmy g related it's not quarterback related it might not even be related to him running the ball more than catching it where you know yeah, you, yeah. You, you you uh you get older faster when you run the football yes. in the national football yeah, yeah, it may be just as simple as they're not the carolina 49ers you know, so. uh, no, they're not. Uh, yeah, not very humid in San Francisco. <laughs> it's not. Maybe he just misses the humidity. It could be that. It could be that. I know. You know he, he likes it a likes it a little hot and humid. I don't know what's going on with them, but uh, neither do I. I would uh, love it if he'd stay. What a run they had, though. I don't think we've spoken since the playoffs. No, actually, no, yet. we haven't. What an incredible run that was. I mean, to talk about just an absolute complete shocker. I was really not prepared for that. Where it was just like, oh, oh. Oh my God! Is this happening? Right. This is kind of. This is kind. Oh no! It didn't happen. Okay. I know. It was, <laughs> <laughs> I know you were out of. You were out of town. Would you have come back for the Super Bowl? Yeah. Oh, I would have absolutely come back for that. Because we were talking about it, like the the ability to beat the Rams in uh, this new facility, this yeah, yeah, new yeah. stadium, and then win the Super Bowl there would have ended a conversation similar to the way that I think Duke ended any conversation with North Carolina yeah, forevermore. Yeah. Like that would have ended. A lot of conversations Absolutely. for the 49ers. Absolutely. But, and you know, I, I will say that, um, and not not to change the subject or to change, change the sport. Do what you wish. Go but ahead. But we were, as, as sort of Northern California sports fans, yes. we were still kind of just picking up the pieces after the Giants run last, last year. Mm -hmm. And then we were... That was just the most... It was like being in the playoffs for three months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it was really... Every single day, yes. we were checking our phones, looking for breaking news. It turns out was the same news for the last five hours. <laughs> um, and then, and then, and then the Niners made the run, and and like me and all my friends were like, 
I don't know if we. I don't know if my constitution is strong enough to handle another run. Yes. That is literally coming out of nowhere. Nowhere. Uh, but man, it's fun, and it it would have been it would have been nice to beat both of those teams, to be quite honest. <laughs> But uh, but we didn't, and uh, you want to know what? Next year. As, well, uh, the, the next year has arrived uh, in baseball, and it yeah. looks like the Giants are going to have to win 120 games to go win for win with the Dodgers this year. I mean, as long as the Dodgers win 119, that's fine. I'll, as long as we can win looks just like one more. It's so, so far, so good, right? You're almost like win I'm for win I'm actually pretty right impressed with, with, with the squad that they've put together. I, I really am. I mean, obviously losing Buster Posey was just, it, I mean, that's just a, a huge yeah. sucker punch. I mean, not only for, you know, uh, his play, you know, uh, behind the plate and just, you know, it, just being being the, the, the captain. Yes. I'm, I'm sorry, Captain Belt, but, you yeah. know, he kind of was. Mm -hmm. Buster Posey was, was the heart and soul. So to lose that is it was really really difficult, and yet you know, very similar to last season, it's 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 uh, you know you, you get the the right group of misfits together and people step up to the plate, you know, proverbially, mm -hmm. and uh, and it looks like uh, you know we might have a good squad, but what we're a week in. Um, yeah, like two weeks in. And I just saw that it, it said it was breaking news that the MLB season it's, just started. It's, it's finally <laughs> happened, and, and Kershaw's got a pitch count limit. And <laughs> even that, though you that know, was that was fun to fun to see. I mean, it's just, just everybody tried to explain that. Colin Hanks here uh, on the Rich Eisen show. Ask him our poll question about the uh, favorite oh, nice. baseball movies because today is the thirty third anniversary of the release of. Uh, Field of Dreams. If you had said Angels in the Outfield, I would say we really got to talk, guys. <laughs> no, I, 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 although, is, is no, that in the poll? No, is not, that in the not, poll? Not in the poll. Not, That's not, not Angels not in the. In the did, did we skip over the Danza aspect of this thing? The Anaheim Angels, but you know they they filmed that in Oakland. Was Tony Danza in you know. Angels in the Outfield? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, he was right. He was the aging pitcher who needed one last go. Well, again, analytics would have gotten him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what are, uh, hit, what hit me with it. What's All right, the so uh, we narrowed it down to these four. Obviously, there's fifty. You know, Field of Dreams, Major League, Bull Durham, The Sandlot. Which one would you choose? Oh wow, um, I'm gonna have to uh, the sweet spot for Major League, Sandlot. I'm gonna admit, never, never, never. saw. Oh. Never saw it all. Just never like saw. me from wow. two years ago. What? Yeah, never saw. It, that was one where I, that, it hit me in that sweet teenage years where I'm like, I'm not watching that. <laughs> Even though I had no reason really not, not to watch. I mean, you're not it. busy. Just take two hours today. And <laughs> no, it's uh, fine. No, seriously, on your on your flight, on your your your, your next flight. You know what? Like that, that might be a good one to watch with the with, with the kids. With the kids, yes, I, I watched. I'll it. do that. Yes, that's a good. But way to be do it. beware because your kids and and my kids are similar ages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, once it was over, yeah, um, they wanted to watch Sandlot two. Uh, electric Boogaloo, which is <laughs> never as good. Turbo and Ozone. Never as good. No, no, no. It was, well, because it's, it's rhymes. That's why they actually, had to no, go with that was, title. It was baseball. It was Aluminum Boogaloo. Okay. <laughs> aluminum Boogaloo. Bing, aluminum Boogaloo. Bing, yeah, that's a, that was the noise it made. Um, all, all I will say, uh, it, it lost a little bit uh, okay. from one to two. All right. So I, be careful. Be careful of that. Uh, not everybody. Not Godfather, too. I was good. You know, once again, you beat me to the point. Well, I'm just trying uh, to, okay, yeah. so it's all about promoting the offer. Major League, obviously, high praise there. High praise. Yeah. Field of Dreams and Bull Durham. I'm gonna say this: it goes extra innings. Mm. No it, ghost runner. Well, except in Field of Dreams, there's lots of ghosts. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it goes extra innings, and it's an All Star game, so it ends in a tie. Oh. I don't know. I, I don't know how you can really. Pick between oh, those I'm two. I'm sorry, Colin. Right this is Sports Talk Radio, and this is a Twitter poll. So you are <laughs> messing with the forces of nature Here's to use thing. a network. Pick a Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, they did that uh, that Field of Dreams game last year. They did. Which, which was the Yankees lost, incredible. even though they should. Incredible. It was great. Regardless of Worked which out. team you're rooting for. Look at that right it there. Was look, wow, look at you have that picture stunning. right Hoskins. Well done. Clearly, they've got to do a Bull Durham one at some point, right? Which oh, is what? At the stadium? At the stadium. Will they come out of the bar? I mean, if, <laughs> someone's got, if someone doesn't hit the bull and the, and the smoke yeah. comes out, it's free no state. good. Get a free stake. Well, I know Nuke yeah. Lelouch would be uh, Araldis Chapman. He'd play that role. 
I mean, he'd hit the bull. You know, KFC or some fried chicken company wants in on that action as well. <laughs> uh, All right. By the way, you're doing an outstanding job of deflecting. You must choose. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to go with Field of Dreams. What's the current poll question results as it stands? Yeah. So, uh, Bull Durham, I mean, sorry, uh, Major League 34%. The Sandlot, again, take some time. 29%. Wow, Field of man. Dreams, 22%. Bull Durham, 16 Damn. Well, so Dennis you, Habert and Dennis Leary beating up on Costner movies right now is what you're saying. Dennis uh, Leary yeah. was in The Sandlot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he was? He's a very young man, yes. Well, I was going to yes. say F you, Joe Boo, but... <laughs> yeah, you know. It's also that one, <laughs> too. Oh, he plays an a-hole stepdad, kind of. Oh, oh boy. And that's the... Uh, that's he had the, a song the... called A-Hole, which uh, I don't know if you remember. <laughs> very popular. Dennis Leary had a great song called... <laughs> called that uh you or, or did you just the reference the the famous uh, hank's family game of uh as nfl oh, coaches and stepdads right oh. there inadvertently, inadvertently oh see inadvertently. oh man what kind of stepdad dennis leary is i have no idea <laughs> well, all you gotta do is watch <laughs> the sandlot <laughs> <laughs> well he just see played. i don't know because i haven't watched the movie yet but he played a head coach of the nfl in draft day so you know it's he all, has it's done all right. relative oh yeah have you ever done a sports movie uh no you have not i haven't i i i, I did audition for draft day and i i want to tell this story actually please it just reminded me of it because ivan reitman who who, just who passed. recently passed away mm -hmm. was such a such a great man such a such a nice man i had met him on numerous occasions i'd read for him a, a few times the last time i saw him i was auditioning for draft day mm-hmm and it was a scene in which, you know, it's the it's one of the GMs that's supremely like treading water and is just out of his depth and element and calls, you know, Kevin Costner's character and is kind of like freaking out. Mm -hmm. And I came in way too hot on the panic and fear mm -hmm. that the character was supposed to have. And Ivan very sweetly said, Colin, Colin, Colin. Down. No, doesn't have to be that bad. And I just went, oh, okay. And in the back of my mind, I said, thank God he told me, because mm -hmm. otherwise I would definitely know I'm not getting this audition. <laughs> and now maybe I've got a shot. I don't know. <laughs> right. Uh, but it was just, he was so sweet and, uh, and so nice to, to very kindly let me down while also making it a whole lot easier for himself to not have to watch you know, three more minutes of, of me that. Uh, of that. He was so sweet and so nice, and he, he was just such a. Were you channeling man. Trent Balky? Is that what you were doing? Is that <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, clearly not a stepfather. That's for sure. <laughs> that was clearly the Jaguars GM in draft day. Well, um, who, was, who was panicked and didn't know what to do? Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. So he was channeling the current Trent Balky, the actual current general manager of the Jaguars. At the time, he was probably of his 49ers. Did you have to audition for that? Movie? I didn't know. I got the role straight out. <laughs> Um, Strictly offered. Uh, straight. Uh, Atta boy. Did I ever tell you my story about uh, being in the scene no. with Frank Langella? No. Okay. These guys have heard this story before, but I'll tell That's it right, right here. So uh, we had a shoot draft day uh, on the Friday of the three-day draft at Radio City Music Hall. Yeah. We were told to wear the same clothes as Thursday night because they were shooting us doing his stuff live mm -hmm. to use Okay. His, as reels. As if you got, as if you didn't have enough going on it. Exactly. They said, please bring your same, <laughs> come early to work Friday, bring oh. your same suit. I'll give you a quick, quick quiz. Out of me and Mike Mayock, who was most irritated by that? <laughs> okay. So Mike Mayock showed up and, and sure enough, uh, Ivan Reitman was a little bit late to set mm -hmm. and we were sitting there like, okay, we're, we showed up early for work. We got mm -hmm. another draft to do. We got to go do this thing. Ivan Reitman shows up, and Mayock, his exchange with Ivan Reitman, couldn't have been nicer, and um, told Ivan Reitman that stripes changed midway through. The scenes weren't so good when they went to Germany. <laughs> and I'm like, Mike, not everything has to be an evaluation. Brother. <laughs> and Ivan Reitman couldn't have been nicer to yeah, take yeah. all of that. So now it's now time for the shoot to finally go down. Mike does his lines because he's just saying them to camera. I have a whole scene to do with Frank Langella. Yeah. And he shows up in sunglasses indoors because that was his own personal touch. He thought ownership should wear sunglasses indoors. I'll be honest with you. I've never seen an owner wear sunglasses brave, indoors. Brave choice. But it's Frank Langella. I mean, you know, my gosh. I mean, does he have an EGOT? I don't know if he's got a, a Grammy. Mm. He might have an EOT. I don't know. I think he's but, got one, which is without the T. Is that what it is? Okay. So, uh... <laughs> 
If, yeah, there you go. It, it, was, it, was a, it was a sleeper. It was a sleeper. By the way, huge fan of his. I, mean, I am. I really am, but I just wanted... Got it. The glasses inside was kind up. of what it was I going. I picked it on. Drive he, home. That was his... That was That's his... That was his... That was the thing. That was no, his thing. That and was and the I guess theme. Ivan Reitman wasn't telling him to take Variations your sunglasses off, Frank. Okay. He looks at me and he we introduce each other. He has no earthly idea who I am. None. <laughs> No, he probably he probably thought he's like, who is this well-appointed background artist yeah. that I'm talking to, <laughs> right? So uh, we sit down and he says, nice to meet you, nice yeah, to yeah. meet you. He goes, would you like to run through our lines? And I haven't read a damn thing yet. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm hosting an NFL draft. I panicked. I absolutely panicked. Oh, God. And I told absolutely. him, wait for two minutes. And I tried to learn my lines as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. And that was me doing my scene with... Uh, with you know, Frank when Langella. you run lines, you can just... Look, I'm sorry, I'm not off book yet. Oh, is that right? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. is that what I should say? Uh, yeah, you could you could have done that. Good tip. By the you way, I am going to use that line for everything from now on. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sorry, off book I'm not off book I'm yet. Not off book yet. That's yeah. the is that was that, yeah, yeah, so that, that that's the term. Hold on, let me refer to my sides. I'm not off. Book. Oh, okay, sides go. and off book. No, but it's good to know that you're offer only, and you didn't know that. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picking up everything you're saying right now. Very specific uh, casting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Did I ever tell you this story about when we shot uh, a Life in Pieces uh, with, episode? With Kurt and Marshall? Kurt? Yeah. No, well, tell me about that. So, okay, so we did an episode of Life in Pieces that, out of the Coliseum when the Rams were still playing. And we yeah. were out there all week because it was an episode where the whole family goes to, yeah. goes to a game. And so we were at the Coliseum all week long, and then we had to show up on Sunday mm. to like just grab as many like quick things as we could with the packed stadium. Right. And so we had to go on, you know, to the game. We were in costume, uh -huh. and one of the uh, the uh, my costume was I was wearing a a, a Dickerson jersey, and uh, so it's got you know the number, the name, yeah. and all that sort of stuff. And we're on the sideline uh, for a pregame, and lo and behold, who is on the sideline, and who am I introduced to? But none, none only than 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 Dickerson. Mm -hmm. He clocks the jersey, and being the 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 veteran professional that he is, mm -hmm. he has a sharpie with him, and he goes, "Oh, let me sign that for you." Get out of here! And I went, "No, no, 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 no! You can't." Which. I guarantee you he's never heard. Because <laughs> you have to wear this on the... I have to wear it on the show. It has to match what we've shot for the entire week. Much like uh, Skeletor, Frank uh, Langella, that's a role <laughs> that he played. Um, Out of all the roles you could choose for him. I mean, that was the first one I saw. Okay. Uh, but much like, uh, much like uh, uh, Frank, he had no idea who I was. He had no idea why I was saying he couldn't sign his jersey that I'm wearing. And so I just had to say, we're on a TV show and this is my costume and it won't match. And he just went, all right, kid. And then sort of like, <laughs> went away. he's just like, ah, all right, fine. I get it. And I just, I so remember. he wasn't part of the shoot. He just happened no, to be he there? Was just, he just happened to be there. He just happened to be there that day. Uh, which was insane. I was not prepared for it. And I literally looked over to, to Tommy Sadowski and, and Dan Bacadaw, and I just went like... <laughs> <laughs> Sadowski's a diehard Raven fan, so he probably knew the predicament you were just placed in by oh, Eric Dickerson. Oh, absolutely. And, and you... actually both... And, and, and Bacadaw is a huge Dolphins fan, too. So uh, the three of us were just sort of geeking out on how lucky we were in, in, so cool. in, in that moment. Um, so it's funny, you came out here, you're like, uh, you're sorry that this is the first time we've seen each other, mm -hmm. um, since you've come back in, you've, you're, you're doing some work in, I'm working Georgia, in Atlanta, right? right Atlanta. Now. Okay, yeah. great. On a peacock gig, by the hey, way. Oh, very good. Yeah. And Synergy. So that means we'll be back <laughs> soon to talk about it. Yeah, totally. you, do you want to talk about it right now? Or? No. Okay, very good. We'll save it for next time. Okay, very good. Um, <laughs> and so, um, it's not the first time we've seen each other. I honked at you. As you were attempting to make a left turn off of Laurel Canyon uh, Boulevard the other day. Are you serious? I was in the car with Susie and the kids. You were in the car with Sam and your children. No way. Yes, I honked at you. And uh, then somebody behind me honked because I wasn't moving through the intersection fast enough. And that was the end of it. <laughs> Wait, were you honking because he was 
making any legal turn or were no, you saying no, 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 no. I, by the way, you were driving perfectly fine. I was going to say, did I you're in the left turn lane? You're in the left turn lane. You're in the left turn lane. Blinker on? Blinker was on. Yeah, that because that, that indicates that I'm going to turn. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you follow the rules of the road. Turn signals. They're for using. But <laughs> <laughs> this just in. Exactly. Use them. Exactly. Exactly. So you. Uh, so I do. I don't know. I mean, it was a quick glimpse. It. it, it you looked like everything. It. it looked like everything was in control in the car. <laughs> Thank goodness. Uh, which was not the state of play within my vehicle. Um, it happens. It nothing to be ashamed of. It happens. Nothing to be ashamed of. But it's well, one of because those someone else was someone else in the car was telling you you're going the wrong way. I'm sure. No, it was not. Actually, Susie saw you, uh, and she's like, "Oh, there they are." And oh. then, okay, and there was one of those moments. Oh. Then we got back to whatever was happening in the back seat, and we don't. And then things it. changed. We don't need to get it. <laughs> uh, no, I was just saying that it's great to see you. I always was. prefer to see you uh, when we're not working. Right. Which is nice. Yes. But is this work? Not really. I don't know. Not really. I don't think so. That's we're just like hanging out. Here. It doesn't feel like it. You're promoting, I'm talking. Not really. That's what we're doing. That's, that's what and we're doing. And we're just actually hanging out doing Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And um, and I, I just, uh, I, I knew well, you were back in town. Uh, I, lo- I, I love that. It's I love that. one of those that. things, too. I love that you were hungry. The person behind me was not happy that I was not slowing happy. down through the intersection I'll, to say hello to my I'll friend. Everyone just needs to calm down. Well, it was you behind me, I oh. think. <laughs> looked in the rear view mirror, and I'm like, what is Brockman's malfunction? Rich, you left out the part where you honked and flipped him off because he was going too slow. No, nope. <laughs> that's not it. <laughs> that's not it. That's not it. No, I don't that's flip not people it. That was the person that was behind Rich. That's oh, right. That's yes. Right. <laughs> that was some choice words there. Yeah. Very good. Uh, at Colin Hanks on Twitter and at Colin Hanks on Instagram as well here on the Rich Eisen Show. Back on the Terrestrial Radio Network with my friend Colin Hanks, whose uh, new TV show, The Offer, on Paramount Plus. New episodes are going to start dropping next week, three of them, to start binging it. And then once a week, every Thursday, for 10 episodes. How is your Hanks Kerchief's business going? Sir? It's going pretty good. It's going pretty good. You know, we released a, 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 a series... A football-inspired series ah. of purchase not too long ago, the El Bear 2.0 that we launched, that were uh, based on the colorways of the California football teams, and I still included the Raiders in that bunch because I, I don't acknowledge uh, the Las well, Vegas. Your, your dad is a huge Raider fan, though. He's a huge Oakland Raider fan. Oh, Oakland Raider. We have fan. tapped out of, uh, of said of love. Out, yeah, oh. kind of tapped now out. in Vegas. Yeah, no, he's kind of can't get into the Vegas Raiders. Okay. Uh, which I understand. I, I can understand. Okay, that. so you still can't abide the Raiders because you're a Niner guy. I mean, I'm but, more of a Niners guy. I, I, I don't but, mind the Raiders. But we're There's trying no, to move product. The Raiders fans are very, very, And I just kind of like the idea of rabid. having four instead of three kerchiefs. You know what I mean? Sure. So I just went like, yeah, there's, they'll always be a California team. Okay. Uh, so, so we can expand outside of California. We could, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah. But, Debo you know, might want to do the kerchiefs. Well. You know, they're 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 made in California. Uh, you know, it's a sort of California pride. It's based. The kerchief itself is sort of uh, uh, inspired by the California flag. So mm-hmm. I thought we did a whole line of ones that were uh, the color ways of the baseball teams. And so at the beginning of last season, we okay. launched one with uh, with the football teams. But it's going great. You know, we've always got uh, we, we've got kerchiefs for sale over at HanksKerchiefs.com. HanksKerchiefs.com. That's right. So that's the way it's not Hanks Kerchiefs the way I've been saying I, it. I, I, I say Hanks Kerchiefs just to make everyone else feel a little bit more comfortable. Why? <laughs> Because <laughs> what does that mean? Well, because because what some, people go, some people go, some people go, Hanks Kerchiefs. Hanks kerchiefs, right? Or Hanks kerchiefs, okay. Either or, but they're all you know. Most of the kerchiefs are named after uh, people I know, people I love. Okay, there isn't a rich kerchief yet. Thank you for saying that. I was, yet. you know, there's an I and rich and eyes, and I was going to ask the most important part of that sentence. Um, because people think of me, they think of uh, neckwear. Yes, of they course. always think that. You of know, of course, sure. Uh, and so I, I thought it would be nice. You name uh, name them after people you know, and so it's sort okay. of like Hank has one, Hank's kerchiefs, okay. and then there's you know the Candace, mm-hmm. the Mike, the John, the Reese, and all you know all these things. And so I just sort of like said, well, why don't we just break it up and have it be two words? 
Okay. But yet, you know, okay. still love a uh, pun like and play on words. So is there a kerchief named Anze? Or do we have that? We or don't that? have an Anze Kopitar one yet. No, not yet. That's interesting. Maybe maybe one uh, coming up in June. Maybe. I mean, we if we can if we can make it into the dance, that I would be nice. I think I think they have. Haven't they made it into the dance? Are we not, there yet? Not quite yet. Not close, yet. We're, close to dancing. We're oh, there it close. is. There we got we're it. getting close. I took Coop to his first game ever, the Oilers beating the Kings the other day. Oh, yeah? Did he love it? Love the game? He did. He did yeah. like it. He saw his first ever goal he's ever seen in his life. Really? Was an Oilers shorthanded goal. How about that? Unfortunate, but kind of beautiful. I, I know, that's right. An, a shorthanded goal. And I had to explain to him what the hell that meant. Because God bless him, he takes everything so literally. He literally thought somebody had lost a hand. I think that's <laughs> <laughs> what I think. He had meant. he is he familiar with hockey? Does he watch? He was hockey not. I had, he got he got up to speed fast. I had to teach him about that's offsides and icing and stuff like kids. that. He, that's the best way to do it with kids. I remember going to my first hockey game. I had never watched hockey in my life. Right. I had no idea what I was sort of doing, and my dad was like. Hey, I want to take you to a hockey game. So we went down to the Great Western Forum when the Kings were still in their uh, forum blue and gold. Yeah, Lakers Similar colors. To the Lakers, yes. He, he was confused when we were in the parking lot. Somebody was wearing one of those jerseys, old school. And I'm oh, like, yeah. that's what they used to wear. That's what they used to and wear. And they used to match the Lakers colors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, not purple and, and, and yellow. Right. Forum blue and gold. Understood. Uh, and they uh, played the Quebec Nordiques. And uh, yeah, nice. both teams were so bad, they have scored like in double digits. <laughs> uh, very little defense going on at that time. And I just was absolutely mesmerized because I had never seen anything like that. And at that time, actually, not too dissimilar. Yes. Uh, uh, at that time, Los Angeles was the only uh, California team. And every other team in the Smythe division. Smythe. Love that name. Yes. Uh, the only other teams were Canadian teams. And so that is how I became uh, so obsessed and in love with the Canadian national anthem because I would just always see the Flames, the Oilers, the Canucks, and the Jets, the old Jets, mm -hmm. play. And it was just like this whole other, it was like a, it was like a, a music fan discovering punk rock. It was just like, I, this is not popular out that I know of, but I love it, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go all in. And then the, that summer, Gretz, uh, Gretzky came. showed up, and yeah. there you have it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I don't know if um, your other big takeaway as a kid um, from that moment is similar to Cooper's from that game. If you asked him his favorite moment, is when they were shooting t shirts into the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and honestly, I just went into total dad mode. Like, if I, like, I need to get one of these shirts. Like I would have, I would have totally body checked somebody. I would have gotten two minutes. I would have cross checked somebody oh. for a t-shirt for this kid. Cooper, he let, here's a lesson about the sin bin. Your dad has committed a penalty, <laughs> the sin. and he's gonna go sit in a glass box for two minutes. Be grateful it's not a, a major penalty. Otherwise, he'd be uh, in a long for time. Five, exactly. Yeah. Um, thanks for coming, brother. Thanks for having best me. Best to your fam. Best to your Same wonderful to you. family. And I cannot wait to see this. I know you've been talking about it for a while, and it is finally here. The It being the new limited series, The Offer, available to start streaming uh, next week on the 28th of April, exclusively on Paramount+. Plus. New episodes, they're going to drop weekly on Thursdays for 10 straight episodes at Colin Hanks on Twitter and Instagram as well. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.